Honey Dollar. Put him to drive carefully, and he usually does. But a few minutes ago, on WSPB, when I heard the radio news report... Huh? Well, it was about a man who was found dead in his car on the edge of a swamp. Oh? Well, maybe that explains why... The radio why... said he was found just off the Tamiami Trail, somewhere south of here. I, I don't know exactly where. Oh, and you think maybe that's what he went out to see about, huh? No. No, no, listen. Unidentified, they said. The man, I mean. But the car, the description of the car... It was exactly like Earl's. Well, so what? Now, take it easy, Mike. First you call WSPB. I did. Only they didn't know any more than they said in the news report. Okay, then call them again. Ask them where they got that story. Whatever news service they got it from knows where it came from, what police department. Or maybe they got it from the police direct. All right, Johnny. I'll phone them again. Sure. And when you get the information, you can call the police direct. Yes, y- y- I'll do it. I'm sorry, I sounded so upset. Oh, well, just stop worrying. But go ahead and put through that call to the station anyway. Meantime... Yes? Meantime, I'll find out how soon I can get a plane down there. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Attention Earl Poorman at the Tri-State Life and Casualty Company, Sarasota, Florida. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the false alarm matter. Expense account item one, 7960, taxi and a plane out of Hartford. Flight connections were perfect. The trip was easy, and by mid-afternoon, I was at the Pormann home on St. Armand's Quay in Sarasota. Johnny, oh, you sweet guy. Okay, now, Mike, you better tell me what you learned when you call back to that station. Oh, Johnny, I'm so sorry. I don't know what got into me, being so worried about him. You mean that Earl is Okay. But the way he rushed out of here this morning without telling me where he was going or why, and then when I heard that awful report on the radio... You did check back with WSPB? They called me. Oh? Yes, right after I'd finished talking to you. And, Johnny, they were wonderful. How do you mean? Well, they'd realized I was upset because of my having called them before, Uh so they'd checked that news report all the way back to the police who'd found that man dead in his car from a heart attack. And? Well, it was the police in Bonita Springs. That's uh, down below Fort Myers. Yeah. And yes, the car was like Earl's. But the dead man's name was Jensen or uh, Benson or something. So all my worry was for nothing. Oh, well, I'm glad. <laughs> you kind of had me worried, too, on the way down here. I love that guy, Johnny, like nobody else in the world. Well, I don't blame you a bit. And now you've come all the way down here for nothing. Well, maybe I'll talk him into taking me fishing. <laughs> Where is he, then? What? Well, after all, if he left early this morning, you still haven't heard from him? No. No, Johnny, I haven't. Uh, And look, it's after four o'clock. Ah, easy, Johnny. And, Johnny, this isn't like him. Not to at least call or something. Now, don't start worrying that pretty head of yours again over nothing. But if he'd told me where he was going or why, he was in such a hurry. Mike, to get, and with all these crazy drivers on the road this time Mike, of year. behave yourself. But Johnny, look, there's... look, now, I, I kind of like that guy, too. And if you'd given me just one honest reason to be concerned about him... Oh. Eh, you see? That's probably Earl calling you right now. Oh, dear, I, I hope so. Sure, of course it is. I'll bet on it. Well, go ahead, answer it. But if it isn't, if it's the police or something... Okay, I'll take it. Mike, listen to me. Who is it, Johnny? Look, listen, I'm sorry not to have called. Oh, it's Earl. But I've been tied up on a pretty serious matter down here. What kind of matter? It could be a murder, one of my policyholders. So put in a call for me to Johnny Dollar up in Hartford. Oh, Johnny. Ask him to get here as fast as he can. You get that, Mike? Tell him not to bother stopping there at the house, but to meet me down here. Down where, Earl? Or maybe you can meet him at the airport and drive in. What? What did you say? Well, I simply asked you down where. Oh, well, down here then. What? 
Who's that? <laughs> well, keep talking, Earl. No, wait. Uh, what is this? I, I mean, who are... Uh, Johnny? That's right. Oh, now, now, look. Somebody's trying to... Is this some kind of a gag? Well, just exactly where are you? You haven't been very definite so far. Okay, okay. It's 9727 Sunnyvale Road. It's off the highway below Venice. But now, listen... Well, if Michael let me use her car, I'll be down there in jig time, okay? Who are you? I told you. But it isn't possible. Just keep your shirt on. How could it be? Why don't you sit there and patiently try to figure it out? Huh? <laughs> you rascal. But, Johnny, if you really are Johnny, look, say something more. Talk to me some more. Well, stop down, down, down in Venice. What? Yeah, try figuring that out, too. Well, I know I can. Oh. Well, everything okay now, Mike? Am I relieved? Sure. But, you rascal, have you ever put Earl into the Department of Utter Confusion? Oh, I tried. <laughs> I'm sure you succeeded. So if I may use your car... Oh, of course you may. Then maybe I'd better hit the road before Earl has a chance to call back. Yes, you do that. Cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing, too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the False Alarm Matter. The address Earl had given me on Sunnyvale Road turned out to be a huge, expensive home of white brick and stucco, surrounded by well-kept lawns and gardens with a lot of statuary. Tall palm trees lined the driveway, and there was every conceivable kind of tropical tree. Yeah, quite an estate. Two cars were parked out front, Earl's and another one that looked familiar with a doctor's tag on it. Earl met me at the front door. After learning how come I happened to be in Florida, he got straight to the point. But uh, now, come inside, Johnny. Yeah, sure. It was Dr. Crutcher who called me, dragged me over here. You remember him? Sure do. Lives just up the street from you and Mike. Yes. Well, Doc is here now, and he can probably tell you more about this than I can. Well, Earl, you said something about a possible murder. Crutcher has been the family doctor. Has taken care of Linda ever since she was a little girl. Linda? Which is to say, since long before she inherited the family chemical business, made it pay off, then married Frank and built this beautiful home. Frank who, Earl? As wrong a marriage as there could possibly have been. Frank was after Linda's money, that's all. And everybody in the world seemed to realize it but she. Yeah, but who's to argue when love comes along? Love? Don't kid yourself. It was out of pity for Frank that Linda married him, made him president of the plant. Typical of her, though. What do you mean? Harry Forrester, chief chemist and VP. Not because he knows anything about it, but because she felt sorry for him after she turned him down in favor of Frank. Jim Tarker, Bill Price, Art Higby, sitting there in their fancy offices, collecting big salaries, and only because she'd known them as kids, heard their sob stories and wanted to help them. And that plant makes money? Only because Linda really ran things herself. Now that she's dead, and... Well, I'm sorry to have got so far away from why I'm glad oh, you're here. Oh, it's all right, Earl. The more general background I can get in a case like this, if it is murder... And I'm absolutely certain now that it is. I'm glad to see you, Johnny. How are you, Doc? Glad you could make it, though how you got down here so quickly. Well, maybe Earl will tell you about that later... Yes. Now, look here. Doc led me across the room to the bed. Lying there was the body of Linda. Even in death, she was beautiful. 
And I must have said something to that effect under my breath. Yes, she was, Johnny. She is now, but not when Earl and I first arrived. Oh? Her body was twisted as though in pain. Eyes wide, the pupils dilated. Mm, that sounds like cyanide. But look at her now. That's right. So, I decided it must have been something far more subtle. Something that would leave no obvious indication after a couple of hours. Possibly potassium theramalicylate. Oh, I'm afraid I never heard of that. Immediate them. symptoms are much the same as for cyanide. But now, as you see, the body is relaxed and what color is left... Well, another doctor, not knowing her history, might have come to the same conclusion as the maid when she called me and said that Linda was having a heart attack. Uh, that's why Doc had me come along with him, Johnny, in such a hurry. What do you mean? A heart attack, Linda? Oh, I see. So, I immediately made some tests. I, uh... Well, ever since you got me interested in forensic medicine, Johnny, well... Oh, I told you you'd make the best medical detective in the world, Doc. Well, I carry quite a bit of equipment about in my car. And I'll bet it even includes that ubiquitous microscope of yours. Yes. Anyhow, I found definite indications now of potassium theramalicylate. Well, how was it given to her? I said indications, Johnny, not traces of it. So? I doubt if even an autopsy would show traces of it. But then how are we going to... Well... Isn't poison usually given in food? I've checked the silverware, every piece of china, every utensil in the house. No sign of it. And she hadn't been out of the house. But now, don't forget this, Johnny. Yeah? Just one good breath from a PTM crystal could produce death in a matter of minutes. Well, what about the servants? There must be servants in a place like this. There are. And I've questioned all of them. Nothing. Hmm. Do you mind if I talk to them? By all means, Johnny, do so. Most of all, I wanted to see the servants, see what they were like, and, uh, well, I must admit, they all convinced me they'd been completely devoted to their mistress, that not one of them could possibly have been accessory to this murder. The last one I talked to was Irene, Linda's personal maid, who'd been with her, helping her dress when the end came. And I was at the closet getting her shoes for her. Now, where was she, then? Sitting there at the dressing table. Poor oh, dear. She had fixed up her hair, and she was putting some perfume on herself before getting into the wait, dry uh, switch. Wait a minute, please. And then she clutched at her heart, and she screamed. Yeah, and then... yeah, Irene, thank you, thank you. That'll be all. And she was gasping, and I helped her over to the bed, and so I laid her down and... Hey, listen, Doc. Uh, yes, Johnny? Now, let me see, let me see. Yeah, here, this perfume bottle with the stopper lying here beside it. Yeah, here you are, Doc. Mm, yes. No, no, don't sniff it. Well, looks to me like it's empty. Sure it is. Now, but Doc, can you run a test? Can you tell if it's ever had uh, a crystal of that potassium thera stuff in it? Well, yes, Johnny, immediately. Okay, now, Earl, you seem to have known quite a bit about Linda, whatever her name is. Well, I should. So maybe all. you can come up with some idea about who might be suspect in this thing. Of course I can. If you and Doc will give me half a chance to get a word in it. Who? Oh. But it's the proof you've got to get for us. Who, Earl? Look, I told you about her marriage, the reason for it, didn't I? Huh? And who else would have access to this rare drug that Doc is talking about? And, and who else will get hold of the chemical plant now that she's gone? Earl. Of course, Johnny. Her husband, Frank Hansen, he's the only suspect. Earl is right, Johnny. Then where is he? He left here early this morning, ostensibly to go to the plant. He hasn't been seen there. Hanson. That Hanson. means only one thing. He skipped. But if you can find him, if you can prove he did this... Johnny, there was potassium theramalicylate in this bottle. Wait a minute. Hanson. What? She said a name like Jensen or Benson or something. Who? What are you talking about? Earl, I'm sorry, but I got a hunch this prime suspect of yours is also very dead. <laughs> Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Here's a reminder to you that March is Red Cross Month. There are a lot of facts in print about the effective, broad battle the Red Cross wages to overcome human problems all year around. It's not likely at this late decade that anyone has to sell the Red Cross. It might be in order, however, to remind our listeners to send that annual check 
to your local Red Cross chapter. Now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. I made a phone call to Police Lieutenant Paul Briscoe at Benita Springs. Yes, it was the body of Frank Hansen they'd found in that car off the Tamiami Trail. Apparently, he'd just been driving along on his way to the plant, smoking a cigarette, when his heart suddenly... Huh? That's right. The cigarette just fell to his lap and burned up to ash. I told him to run a test on the other cigarettes they'd found with the body, a test for PTM. About an hour later, the lieutenant called me back. You were right, Mr. Dollar. It was no heart attack that killed him. It was that poison. Then I talked with Doc and Earl about the personal side of Linda's life, about our love affairs over the years. And yeah, sure enough, the one man who threatened all sorts of things if she married somebody else. But there was still the matter of getting proof for a confession. Yes? What is it, Johnny? What are you thinking of? Doc, I'm going to need your help. You know I'll do anything I can. Now, let me think. Let me, let, me, let me think for a minute. Yeah. Hey, listen. Can you concoct something out of those chemicals you have there? Something that will, say, make a, a, a kind of stain after a few seconds if you put it on your hand? Well, I don't know, John. Uh, yes, yes, maybe there is. Yes, a combination of this colorless dye with a small amount of ferrous hide. Yes, of course it will. A combination? Go ahead. But uh, what for, Johnny? Because I'm going to play this hunch of mine to the end. But we need some proof. Oh, and, and, and Doc, yes? a tiny sponge. Or a piece of gauze that'll absorb one of those two chemicals that I can, uh, well, I can tape it inside a finger on the left hand. Why? Anything you say, Johnny. The other chemical, well, just keep it in the bottle until I'm ready to use it. Johnny, do you mind telling me what you're up to? Sure I mind. Just get that stuff ready for me, Doc, and we'll take off. A few minutes later, the three of us in Earl's car drove down to the chemical plant. Fortunately, the chief chemist, Harry Forrester, was still there. I was introduced, shook hands with him, with both my hands. Then we took him into a private office and I went to work on him. I'm afraid I don't understand what this is all about, Mr. Dollar. Insurance investigator, did you say? Yeah, that's right, Forrester. Now listen to me. Oh, very well. If Linda Hansen were to die... Linda? Die? Heaven forbid. Oh. I, uh, I was in love with Linda one time. Very much in love. With Linda or her money? I beg your pardon. You know that's true, Harry. Pullman, I resent that. Just sit down, Forrester, and take it easy. Okay, now. If Linda were to die, I would assume that her fortune, including this plant, would go to her husband, Frank. Frank. Well? Well, of course it would. But why do you bring up but, the thing? But uh, suppose Frank were to die, too. You'd kind of be next in line, wouldn't you? I? Of course you would. After all, you were next in line in her affections, weren't you? Well, Dollar, I don't see that Smart, I... Smart, ambitious guy like you? You mean you didn't even rate next to Frank? Of course I did. Then you'd be next in line, wouldn't you? Well, suppose I were. <laughs> what difference does it make? And you just happen to know where to get your hands on PTM. PTM? Potassium thermosilolate. You do have it here, don't you? Why, I, uh, I would assume so. She's that is a chemist? And you aren't sure? Well, of course we have it. But uh, I've never had occasion to go near this stuff. Never? You sure of that? Absolutely. Quite frankly, I'd be afraid of any proximity to such a drug. Never touch the stuff, huh? Never. May I have the bottle, please, Doctor? There you are, Johnny. That is PTM. Now you know it comes in crystal form. Oh, Yes. No, Forrester, this is just a harmless... Oh, oh, I'm afraid I spilled some of it on your hands. Yes, you certainly did. Oh, that's all right. Wipe it off. It's already begun to do its work. Now, what? That bluish tinge, positive proof that you've been handling PTM. You... You were sure? Yeah, that you somehow got into Linda's perfume bottle on some of Henry's cigarettes. Well? And you know... That's right. Want to call the police, Earl? Sure. No. So you're right. So I killed them both. But I'm not going to be dragged through the filthy courts. And neither you nor anybody else... No, will... you don't. Oh. Phew. Here. Look. This tiny capsule he was about to swallow. Yeah. What do you think, Doc? Hmm. Well, of course I can't be sure without... 
Those crystals certainly look like it. PTM. PTM. So, it'll be up to the courts whether Harry Forrester likes it or not. And believe me, I'd hate to be in his shoes. Now, I keep wondering, why don't they ever learn? Expense account total, including a gift to the Pormans for putting me up for a few days while Earl and I did some fishing, 161 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, the majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's program. Next week, a lesson in how to rob a bank. You think I'm kidding? Well, I'm not. You see, it's also a lesson in how to get caught doing it. Matter of fact, it involves a modern, clever, scientific device that not very many people know about. If more of them did, well, believe me, there'd be a lot less futile attempts at bank robbery. And it's this very device that helps me solve the case I investigate by providing a picture, a simple snapshot that didn't turn up, but that gave me all the evidence I needed. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Shirley Mitchell, Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Lou Merrill, Paula Winslow, Frank Nelson, and Dick Crenna. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Stay tuned now for Suspense on the CBS Radio Network. Okay, they're coming into the stretch and turning for home. It's Warlock and Gay Reward, head and head for the lead. Here they come, here comes the finish, and it's Warlock by an O. Man, oh man, what a race. Man, oh man, a Shevitz, what a wine. Yes, in sports, you can tell it's a great moment by the cheers. And in wines, you can tell it's Manischewitz by the raves. Man, oh, man. Man, oh, Manischewitz. Everybody's wine because it tastes so good. Try all three new Manischewitz fruit wines. Blackberry, cherry, and loganberry. Each 100% pure and specially sweetened. Serve Manischewitz fruit wines anytime and often. In a wine glass. <laughs> on the rocks. <laughs> in a highball with your favorite mixer. Manischewitz, everybody's wine, because it tastes so good. Manischewitz Wine Company, New York. WROW, Albany, New York.